We move along now to a swim pen field computing system from the city of San Diego, Larry Gardner and Dave Schlesinger. Good afternoon. I'm Dave Schlesinger, the director of the Metropolitan Wastewater Department. I'd like to thank your staff for putting us on after lunch because I'm going to talk to you about sewage. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, sewer water infrastructure management, um, we call it SWIM, field computing system has uh, dramatically changed the way we do our business. Over two million citizens in San Diego <coughs> County depend on our services. When they pull that silver handle, they initiate an extremely complex hydraulic engineering and environmental process. Our collection system encompasses over 200 square miles. It has 2,528 uh, miles of collection system. It has 87 pump stations. It has 53,029 manholes. We operate the most technologically advanced regional wastewater system in the country. We are the first publicly owned system in the nation which has achieved ISO certification. Now, associated with a modern maintenance management system is the constant pressure to reduce costs. Our system is already undergoing a two and a half billion dollar capital upgrade. Our employees have undergone intense scrutiny through competitive assessments with the private sector. We have benchmarked our activities. We have compared them with your similar municipalities who have elected to contract out their services. We believe, however, a combination of the most advantageous aspects of the public and the private sectors is the right way to do our business. SWIMPEN is a proactive, state-of-the-art maintenance management system executed in a highly competitive environment. SWIM has been fully implemented in all of our maintenance crews. It has greatly enhanced operations in our wastewater collection division. As an example, SWIM provides more detailed information to personnel in the field, enabling them to better plan and perform their work. A crew needing to inspect a manhole in a remote canyon can access an electronic map on their pen-based computer prior to leaving for the job. They click on the manhole in question and access detailed facility data. Is the cover locked or is it sealed? What type of mechanism secured it? When was it last televised? Will specialized equipment be needed to enter the manhole? Is it concrete, brick, or a combination? Are special permits required to enter the property? All this information enables the crew to transport only the tools and equipment required to access the manhole and perform the inspection. Before I turn the presentation over to my close friend and colleague in the water department, I'd like to leave you with this pearl of wisdom. Ben Franklin, when asked, what was the fair price for water, replied, you will know the price of water when your well runs dry. Larry? Thanks a lot, Dave. And Dave is my close friend and colleague. And one of the reasons that we are so close is because we never forget where we've come from. We always keep in mind the importance of the individuals in our organization who have made the commitment to excellence to prove and to show to our community that public servants, in fact, are at the top of their realm in terms of providing professional services. In 1994, when we first started to talk about SWIM, people told me it can't be done. Larry, you cannot put a $10,000 piece of technological equipment in the hands of individuals who are accustomed to working in trenches, wearing boots, digging trenches with picks and shovels and things of that nature. And I told them, yes, we can. I know we can because of the fact that one of the things that has always been overlooked in public service is the quality and the integrity of the individuals that we have working. We worked and we strove, Dave, and I put together $4.5 million in savings over the ensuing four years. Those $4.5 million will pay us back a million dollars minimum in conservative estimates every year in savings for our ratepayers, the people in our community. We have restored public confidence within the city of San Diego and the processes that we perform. Is our process replicable? Absolutely so. Arlington, Texas is already in full production. Phoenix, Arizona is in design. Uh, Manatee, Florida and other communities are already lined up uh, to take SWIM and to utilize SWIM. We've also come up with a creative way of returning more dollars to our ratepayers. We'll receive 8.75% of any sales on the SWIM uh, patent, and in addition to that, we'll receive monthly fees. We've improved the way that our people provide services in a very complex system. 
San Diego's a desert. And I want you to picture just for a moment being in the middle of the night at about 3 o'clock in the morning. It's dark. There's water gushing at 200 pounds per square inch down the street in front of you. You're asleep at home right now, peaceful in your bed. All the valves are covered. Nobody can see where anything is. We've got a swim pin pace piece that can now pinpoint exactly where our people are. We've made a great accomplishment for public service and restored the confidence of the people in public service. One of the most difficult things in any bureaucracy is to convince them of the need of change. And, and obviously you have done a terrific job in getting your bureaucracy, that is the people working in the system, to accept what was really a fairly dramatic change in the way you did business. It seemed to me that you used both a carrot and a stick. I mean, the, the carrot was to really go to them and, and work with them right where they work. But then there was also the threat, wasn't there, of outsourcing, that, you, there, that some of this product might be outsourced, and therefore there was a, a bit of a club over their head. Could you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Both uh, David and the Ma Metro Wastewater Department and myself and the Water Department and all of our 1,600 employees faced the possibility of having our services outsourced to the private sector. We went through a complete managed competition program and proved to not only the legislative body within the city of San Diego, but also to our community and to those private sector folks <coughs> who thought perhaps they could do what we did better, that they couldn't. Uh, and we proved that by establishing standards. We benchmarked. We took a look and were reviewed by every possible agency, both external and internal, that could be looked at. And the decision was that the services were going to stay inside within the city of San Diego. We did that successfully only because of the fact that the employees got on board. And it was a very tough job at first because the employees resisted taking this new technology. They said, well, wait a minute. I'd rather have my clipboard and I'd rather have my 50 pounds of map books and I'll go out. It may take me another hour and a half or two hours to get the job done. But what they did was they realized during the course of, of us moving along that within uh, the first, oh, I'd say six to seven months, they could master this process because it was their process. We brought the people from <coughs> The, uh, from the data processing corporation into our operations yard. We didn't let them sit in an ivory tower. We said, you got to get out here and get dirty with the people that do the work. And they did. And so people bought into the process because it was theirs. And so we demonstrated that, in fact, we could do the job as well or better than anyone. To what extent is this uh, replicable outside of the water and sewer area? And I just wonder if you've gotten inquiries from electrical utilities, cable, TV, cable companies, and the like um, to use this technology <coughs> elsewhere and how easy it is to use elsewhere. We certainly have. We, it is replicable outside of the water and sewer, uh, sewer areas. Dave has just made three presentations in Mexico to uh, three cities in Mexico that are very interested. Uh, there are gas and electric companies that this particular technology is also transferable to. And so we're extremely excited because there are dividends that will definitely come back uh, over the years, and, 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 and we're just excited. Uh, your application mentioned that uh, you had a high rate of uh, customer satisfaction, and my question is two parts. Uh, first of all, how do you know that? Did you do a survey? And second of all, have your incidences of uh, complaints uh, been reduced since when Penn was uh, initiated? Yes and yes. Our, our incidence of complaints have reduced uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of approximately 34 uh, percent. And that has to do with the restoration of water services, water pressure being provided, uh, hospitals, uh, uh, dialysis laboratories, things of that nature. So in, in answer to that question, absolutely. We, 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 we're, we're solid as far as that's concerned. We do surveys twice a year anyway. We go out and we survey all of our customers and ask them exactly what they think and, and they provide us with feedback. Yeah, when a fighter pilot is given a, a, a mission, what he or she takes to the cockpit is a little disc which will guide him or her precisely to that target. One difference, I believe, is that along the way that flight is recorded so that when the pilot goes back, he or she can sort of retrace that route, knows exactly what was dropped where. As I understand it, you don't have that latter part installed, right? That is, how do you get, what's the feedback mechanism? The feedback mechanism is that everything that's done is actually downloaded on a daily or nightly basis. And we can, in fact, go back and take a look at what has been done before. Maps are updated. 
Uh, and that's the critical piece, using the geographical information systems that are contained within PIN allows us to be able to update information where we found a valve or a personnel access cover, manhole cover, or any of those kinds of things that are not where they are supposed to be, then not only does the person that found that have that information now, but there are 300 other crews that also have that information instantly. So we do have that, that portion that's there. The piece I think that you're thinking about is the global positioning satellite portion of it, where we can actually track where our crews are. That will actually be implemented in phase two, which will be in another six months. Gentlemen, thank you both for coming. Thank you.